it's Lauren. So it has been a minute since I did another video and I just want to say thank you so much to all of our subscribers for tuning into our last video, which was Olivia's birth video. I'm right here in her room right now. Um, thanks so much, you guys. It meant so much. I've read every single comment. Um, and they all mean so much to me and my family. And I just wanted to say also, thank you for being such an encouraging to, uh, community to so many other women on here because there's so many other women that are like, I'm about to have my baby. You know, this gave me hope. This made me feel positive about it or whatever it might be. Um, and I just want to say thank you because so many of you who were just watching the video were like, congratulations, me too. How can I help you, girl? You're going to do great. Don't be worried. And just encouraging so many other women. So I just want to say thanks so much for just being awesome. Um, and I want to say hi to all of our new subscribers because we got so many views on that last um, birth video. And um, so many of you have asked, you know, why don't you do any videos? And honestly, it was because we didn't um, have a lot of activity on this channel. And we honestly posted that video to really just kind of be like a keepsake for us. Um, somehow it got shared and a lot of people viewed it. That's why um, I'm coming to you now from Olivia's room and she is almost one. <laughs> she will be one January 20th, but so many of you just watched that video like this month. Um, so I just want to say welcome and I wanted to give you guys a little bit of information about me and my family because so many of you have asked for that um, and I wanted to let you know that I am going to start doing new videos. So most of them will be mom videos because it seems like that's what most of our viewers are and want to see. Um, but if you guys have any recommendations, put it in the comments below what you want to see, whether that's, you know, anything from life advice to um, a day in the life to, you know, if you want to see product reviews like newborn must haves or maybe what people don't tell you about giving birth, um, all those kinds of things. Let me know. Those are the things that I'm kind of thinking I'm going to add to this channel, the kind of content that we're going to have. But I want to hear from you guys because it's really about you. I want to be able to answer any questions that I can for you guys that are going through the same kind of life steps that we are just from our, um, our viewpoint or from our experience. Um, so for those of you that don't know, um, my husband and I were married on New Year's Eve in 2016. Um, we have one son, Halston, who is almost seven years old. Him and Olivia are actually three days apart in birthdays, but they are six years apart. Um, so when I was pregnant with Halston and delivering Halston, I was actually going through a divorce. Um, and that's for a whole nother video, um, or maybe that's just going to be kept with us, but I was actually going through a divorce. So in, you can actually watch his labor and delivery video below. I'll link it below, but my mom was in the room and my best friend was in the room. She actually filmed Olivia's birth and she filmed Halston's birth. So she's like the videographer slash best friend since I was probably 14 years old. Um, and she's probably the closest person I have to a sister. So I always love having her in the room. Um, when my children come into the world. So that's that. Um, another thing for you guys to note is that my mom um, passed away a couple years ago, a couple days after our wedding. Um, and so it was really hard not having her in the room this time for Olivia, but she showed up in so many ways and we really felt like she was there. Um, one of the things that I think was most special is that my husband and I are both dark complected and we have dark features. And I always felt like God was gonna let me know that my mom you know, could see us and is still connected to us by giving our daughter blue eyes and she has super blue eyes. <laughs> um, so that was just like a really awesome blessing. And right when she came out, the nurse was like, Oh my gosh, her eyes are so blue. And we were like, oh, and you can kind of see us. We're like, they are. And it was just kind of a cool, I don't know, moment where I felt like my mom was like, I'm here, I'm seeing it, you know, like I'm here with you guys. Um, so that was really special, even though she wasn't able to be there. Um, but I am a full-time realtor. And like I said, mom to Halston and Olivia. Halston is a super rambunctious all boy. He is all out boy. And that's all I knew for six years. Um, but he loves sports. He loves to be outside. Um, he's super smart, really, really tenderhearted and compassionate. And he's like a lover. He's definitely a mama's boy. Um, and then my husband, and me and Halston all became a family, and I cannot even tell you the blessing of that. After I got divorced, I would write down like, okay, if somebody doesn't check all these boxes, like I don't even wanna date them. Um, and they were really, really weird. Like I want somebody to be from Louisiana, I want somebody to know and love Christ, I want somebody um, you know, to want a son, and like all these things, and like he checked every single box, and um, it has been amazing seeing him love Halston like he's his own, truly. Um, so we became a family and then after we got married, 
that year we decided, you know, I was getting older <laughs> um, and I wanted to go ahead and just start trying. Um, and we got pregnant with Olivia in May of 2017, I guess. Yeah, May of 2017. And um, we had her January 20th, 2018. Um, so it's been amazing being a family of four. My husband, um, I, I think I've told you guys this before, but you may not have seen it in another video, but I am a full-time realtor, part-time health coach. Um, those are my two passions. I love helping people. So I also wanted to keep doing this YouTube channel because I wanted to be able to help give advice to people just based on my own personal experience. Um, so many of you were like, how did you keep positive or, you know, what got you through or, you know, that kind of thing. And all I can do is speak from my experience, but if it helps somebody in any way, I love that. I love being able to share my experiences with other people. That's why I love real estate. I love helping people in that way. And I love health coaching because I think health and fitness really fuels your fire for everything else, all of your other passions in life. Um, so I'm going to keep doing videos, you guys. It's a little bit about our family. My husband, my husband works for the NFL. Um, so that's a little bit about us and what we do. So he travels quite a bit. Um, I have quite a bit of flexibility, but I work a lot. Um, and then we've got our two kiddos that we love so, so, so much. Um, so that kind of brings you guys up to date on who we are. Um, and then Olivia is almost one. So a little bit about her. She is super sassy, spunky, super girly, which was a huge change for us having a son who's all boy, um, but she is just a light. I mean, she's loud, she loves to talk. If she's not in the conversation, you'll hear her go, ah, and chime in. Um, she's a big eater, she's got eight or nine teeth. Um, you know, she's the youngest in her class, but she is advanced. All the teachers are always like, that girl, she's gonna be walking before everyone else. She is just on the move, and I think that's a lot because she watches her brother, um, you know, and he's so much older than her, but she already gets so many concepts. I have a video of her when she was four months old and I got, I put her on my hip and I go, all right, let's say bye-bye. And she goes, and I freaked out and I put her the video on and I was like, okay, do it again, Olivia. Bye-bye. And she was like, I was like, oh my gosh, she's doing it. She's saying bye-bye. So it's been so fun to see all these milestones. She's so close to walking. She's pulling up on everything, taking steps and falling. Um, but it's been so exciting. We love her so much. She's such a joy to our family. And Halston is the best big brother I've ever seen in my life. He's so, so sweet with her. Everything she does new, he's so excited. So I can't wait to show you guys a little bit, a glimpse of our family. I might do some day in the life vlogs, um, you know, whenever we have something fun that we're doing so you guys can see. Um, but comment below again if you guys want to see any type of video, let me know. And I will try and get it up every week. So let's jump into the birth story. Back to my notes, but I mean, it's pretty fresh. Um, so first and foremost, I do wanna let you guys know, um, I switched OBs from when I was with Halston. So when I was with Halston, you can watch his birth story. I'll link it below. Again, video cameras, not the best. Um, lighting, not the best quality of video, but totally different. I was working up until the day I went into labor with him and my water broke in my chair at work. And I drove myself home, I took a shower, I got ready, put on makeup, did my hair, went to the hospital, no contractions, nothing. I had to get on Pitocin three rounds before I felt a single contraction. And then once I did, it came on like a ton of bricks and it was so painful. I got an epidural about an hour later. I'm just giving you the Cliff Notes version of Halston's birth. Um, and then once I got that epidural and it really kicked in, it was long, it was a long time before I had him, but I was in no pain. I birthed him pretty much the same way I did Olivia. And I mean, I know a lot of you are against epidurals or you're against laying on your back having babies. It It's what happened for me. It's what worked for me. It's what made it enjoyable for me. I was able to grab my kids right when I had them. Not a lot of pain. I'll get into Olivia's, but my epidural didn't totally work for her. But I still, I think my adrenaline was just keeping me going because then once I had her, the afterbirth was pretty painful. <laughs> um, so I will let you guys know about that. But anyway, his was totally different no contractions. So then I switched OBs, um, you know, it was six years later. Um, and this OB did check me. My first one with Halston never checked me when I would go in for it. He was like, you know, you can't really tell. I don't like to do that. I don't like to mess with anything. And I was like, okay. And Halston was born two days before his due date. So, I mean, obviously my water broke, but they had to help speed up the process, but he was pretty close to his due date. Um, so with Olivia, 
you know, I was going about da da da. I went, I got checked at 36 weeks, and she was like, you're two centimeters. So to me, not knowing anything, I was like, two centimeters? Oh my gosh, can't you like go to the hospital when you're four? Like, oh my gosh, like this is probably gonna go quick and everything. No. So I started having Braxton Hicks contractions with her, and to me, they felt like contractions. There was almost, almost at 37 weeks, I called my doctor and I was like, this has to be it. I mean, I'm in my bathtub. This isn't getting any slower. I'm timing my contractions are like every five minutes. I was like, I just, and, and I think what it is, is you know, when you're pregnant for so long, you don't feel cramps for so long. I mean, for almost a year, nine months. And I was cramping and I was like, this has to be what contractions feel like. Like this must be baby contractions, you know? Um, and then after about an hour and a half of that, I called my friend, I was like, my husband wasn't home and I was like, we're gonna have to go to the hospital for sure. After about an hour and a half of that, it just stopped. And I was like, okay. Then it happened again, a couple days later. Then it happened again. I kept having these Braxton Hicks contractions for I think two weeks before I actually went into labor. And that's another point, I did actually go into labor. But it was like two weeks. And every time I would call my doctor and she'd be like, just wait it out, just wait it out. And then I had a friend that I was talking to and she went into natural labor with all three of her kids. And she was like, when you know, you, you know. And everyone always says that. They're like, when you know, you know. So true because I will tell you, it was Halston's birthday party. And I had gone back 37 weeks and she was like, you're about at a three. I mean, you're pretty close to a three. And I was like, gosh. And she was like, so you are progressing. It's just those contractions aren't active labor, you know, but it's, it's progressing you a little bit. And I was like, okay. So it was Halston's birthday party. It was on a Friday night and we went, everything was fine. I wasn't having Braxton Hicks, nothing like that. Woke up in the middle of the night at 5 a.m. And I went, I just felt like this deep, almost to like TMI, you guys, but we're talking about birth, almost to like my butt, from my stomach to like my butt. And it was like this deep, like pang of pain. And it wasn't that long, but I was like, oh my gosh, like that was deep. And I tapped my husband and I went, hey, it's gonna be today. So just, you know, know that it's gonna be today. And he was like, are you sure? Because you've been having these pains. And I was like, mm -mm. When, like, when people say, when you know, you know, now I know. <laughs> and that is so it. If I can give you guys any advice on that, even if you're having these little Braxton Hicks contractions, I would say it's a different pain. It's a pain that goes, oh, this is something. This is, some it's not a pain where you're like, I don't know, is that, is that? Ugh, I mean, or a dull pain where you're like, I'm just kind of in pain and it hurts. It's not really like that. It's like kind of opens your eyes a little bit and you're like, I mean, that was a deep pain. But it, it was bearable for me. I don't know how everyone else is, but it was bearable for me. So for instance, my son had a basketball game that morning at, I think it was like at nine o'clock. And I said, you know, it was like five when I woke up my husband. I was having contractions pretty regularly, but I think I went back to sleep until like seven. I don't remember. I think it was like seven. Um, and then I woke up and I was just like, it woke me up. And I was like, yeah, I mean, it's still going. But then it seemed to not get faster. So I was like, wait, I mean, maybe this isn't it. You know, maybe this isn't it. And I was like, it has to be it. And I would walk and everything. And then it would hit again. And I would need, I would have to kind of like, mm, mm, okay. You know, but then in my mind, I was like, I'm not in a ton of pain. And this has now been, at this point, like, they went to the basketball game. I'm fine. I'm like, I called my doctor and she's like, I don't want you coming in there with a baby coming out. So why don't you just head that way? So I'm like, okay, let me wait till they get home. So that was at 10. And then at about 10 o'clock, I had like a bloody show for sure. It was like mucus and blood. Sorry, TMI. But again, first story. Um, so it was like a bloody show, mucus and blood. And I was like, okay, I mean, this is, this has to be it. But I was so scared that the hospital was going to send me home because I was just like, I don't know if they're close enough together. Like I'm not, I don't think they are, you know? So I, they were like 10 minutes apart. And then once we got ready to go to the hospital, they were like 15 minutes apart. And I was like, oh man, like even if I'm going into active labor, like this could take hours, you know? So we get in the car, me and my husband, we send Halston with a friend, we get in the car and I'm the whole, right when we get in the car, we get onto the freeway, which is like two minutes away from our house. And I had one and I was like, okay, okay, that was, that was painful. I was like, that was painful, but okay. Well, we drove all the way from right when we got onto the freeway to the hospital, which is not super close to our house. It's like 20 minutes away. And I promise you the whole time, I didn't feel like I had one at all. And I was like, 
David, like they're not, I'm not having them close enough. Like it's not working out. And he was like, okay, well let's just go in there. You know, if you're not, and I'm like, it's been like 18 minutes and I haven't had one, you know? And I, he was like, okay, well that last one was pretty good. And I was like, let's just go in, whatever. So we get out and we, we drive a Jeep. And so like I got out of my Jeep and it's a Jeep Wrangler. So you do have to get like out of it. I got out of my Jeep and I just went like, Ugh. And I just like kind of collapsed. And then I walked a little bit and there was like a, I don't know, like a podium there right inside the hospital doors. And I just went, mm. and I just, that was definitely the deepest one. And I was just like, oh, and the girl at the front desk, I remember she was like, you need a wheelchair? I can get you a wheelchair. And I was like, I don't know. Like, am I staying? Am I going? But that one was pretty deep. So I was like, either way, I mean, this is a true contraction. So we go upstairs. I'm like, okay, I guess this is happening. We check in. We're in the waiting room. And I was kind of feeling bad, like my back hurt, but I wasn't having like bad ones. And I had like one more bad one. And I was like, okay. Then they got us into the room. I got changed and everything. And um, she was like, yeah, talking to me. And I was just kind of like, oh, I just feel like I need to go to the bathroom. Like, and I remember with Halston when they put me on pit and it started working and it was bad. And I was like, oh. I felt like it kind of took my breath away when it started hurting and all I wanted to do was go to the bathroom. <laughs> you can watch that video below. It's a doozy. Um, but that's how I felt. And she was like, yeah, I mean, you know, that." and I, it, it hit me. I was like, well, yeah, that's how I felt the last time once I was being induced. And um, anyway, so I was like, okay, this is really it. But still, they weren't super close together. I think at this point they were like 10 minutes apart, but that's what they were at like five in the morning. So I was like, I don't know. And I was like, am I staying? Am I staying? And she goes, oh, you're staying. You're, she goes, you're about at like a, I could maybe stretch you to a four. And then I was like, well, I was at a three two weeks ago. I mean, it's crazy, isn't it? Like when you get these like cervix checks and like you think you're going to progress, but you don't, your body just does what it's going to do naturally. Um, so anyway, she was like, I could stretch to a four, but like, and, and she later told me it's in the video, but she was like, they weren't close together, but you were having, she was like, you were having epidural, making epidural faces. And I was like, what do you mean? And she was like, every time you'd have one, you'd be like, mm, like you were trying so hard to like hold it in. And she was like, you're staying. So she got me all hooked up and everything. And with Halston, I did not want my epidural until I felt pain because I had read that an epidural will like slow down your labor. Come to find out it's, it's all the water that goes into you and the IV and stuff that slows down your labor. It's not necessarily the epidural. I'm not a doctor. I don't know, but that's what they told me this time. Um, they said that like when you're, you know, they, they hydrate you full of all these fluids and stuff. And then they give you the epidural and they hydrate you. And they're like, so when you're getting like super hydrated, you kind of slow down a little bit, but either way that could be wrong, but that's what I was told. But I still was like, I want to like progress before I get one. And she was like, well, you can just order one. And then like, I'll tell you like you're progressed enough. Like if you want to get to a five or something like that, I'm like, okay, fine. So all of our friends and family came in and like, I'm still having contractions, but like I was really surprised because I had not had contractions naturally the first time that like they were bearable. I mean, they were a lot of pain, but they weren't close enough together enough at the time to be like, I'm in so much pain and it's never ending. I've heard that people have contractions that are super close together to where you feel like you never get a break. And I didn't go far enough to feel that. But I will say like a contraction is no joke. And some of mine were long, but I would get a little break. And then I'd be like, okay, it's a break. It's a break, you know? Um, anyway, it, anyway, so our friends and family came um, my in-laws were there. My dad was there. Um, who else was there? Oh, my best friend was in the room because she was filming everything. And I just like her to be in the room, especially when I lost my mom. I wanted somebody that was like family. Um, and she's probably the closest thing I have to a sister. Um, and so she was in the room and we were getting excited and I, and Megan checked me again, the nurse, and she was like, Oh, you're at a five. And this was within like, I think an hour. And I was like, I'm at a five and she, or not even, I mean, an hour since we checked in and she was like, yeah. And I was like, okay. And we got in our, my bed at like noon, I think, or like 1145. And, um, she was like, yeah, you're at a five and, um, you're going. So she was like, I'm going to call the laborist to break your water and you know, you're going to keep going. So do you want me to order the epidural? I was like, sure, fine. 
So she called the laborist, which my husband always says is like the best job in the world because they're basically like retired. Some of them are not, but they're like retired OBs. And for liability purposes, the hospital can't have like a nurse break a bag of water. Um, so it has to be a doctor, but like he literally goes around breaking waters and he makes like a very good living doing it. And I'm like, that's amazing. Uh, but anyway, he came around, he um, broke my water and then he checked me. Either he checked me and he broke my water or broke my, and he was like, oh my gosh, you're like almost at a six. And I was like, what? And this was in like another hour. So I was like, okay, we're, we're moving ahead here. And she was like, you're, you're progressing for sure. So I'm in a lot of pain at this point, but like still controllable. Like when they would come, I would just kind of bear down and like kind of stop talking and then it was okay. But she was like, okay, so the epidural, uh, the anesthesiologist is going to come do the epidural, but I do want to let you know, he is a pedi um, neonatal anesthetist. And I was like, what? And she goes, yeah. So just so you know, I mean, typically he's doing this on like premature babies, not moms. And for some reason it just stuck in my head and I got really scared because I was like, wait, why would she tell me that? And I know she was just trying to disclose whatever she needed to, but in my mind I was like, oh my gosh, wait, how does he know my anatomy? And I mean, he's a doctor, he does this a lot. But I was like, what if, what if he gets thrown off or, you know, like I'm different than a, a premature baby like and I just got really nervous so they make everyone go out when you get it and I'm just sitting there with my nurse who was phenomenal I love you forever Megan if you ever watch this um she she helped the positivity carry through to the whole birth she really did she gave us so much information she was so like our cheerleader I loved her um and so I was holding on to her and I just started shaking and then I started panicking because I was like he's not gonna get it in right because I'm shaking and she was like no listen and he tried and it didn't go in and it hurt and he kind of made me feel like you're gonna need to stay still like what are you doing you know and I was like I'm sorry and then I got panicked that it wasn't gonna work <laughs> and I was like oh no and I was holding her hands and I was like <laughs> and I just started crying and I was like why am I crying and she was like hey look at me look at me and she was like um an anesthesiologist is sticking a needle into your back that's why you're crying it's a scary thing and that's okay it's scary but I'm here for you and I'm and like we got through it I was like, did it work? Did it work? And he was like, yeah, everything's good. You know, you're good. Got through it. So I would say maybe like 30 minutes later, I was starting to feel like no pain on my left side, but I could definitely still feel on my right side. So then I was kind of a little nervous about that. I was like, what's it going to feel like when she comes out? Like, am I going to be able to feel that side? You know, um, I still felt like if, if you see in the labor video, I'm like, I think I'm having one and I, but it just wasn't excruciating pain, obviously. But I still had pain. It didn't totally take on the side. <laughs> um, and afterward, after I had my baby in my arms and like the excitement and everything, we're sitting there. When the afterbirth happened, I never felt that with my first baby. And I, you can kind of see me. I'm like, ugh, ugh. And I kind of pause. Like it hurt like a deep, 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 deep cramp. But I didn't care as much because I had my baby and my husband and like, everything was great and wonderful and puppies and rainbows, you know, but it was, it was a little painful and I don't think that it took totally on this side. That being said, the left side was great. Um, and I was kind of happy with it because I could feel, I could feel my contractions. I could feel, you know, when I was, I could feel her like come down and I think it kind of helped me when I was pushing because I could feel a little bit like how hard I was pushing. Um, but anyway, so yeah, so I got that patrol and then like maybe two and a half hours later, I was like, so this would have been like four o'clock, I guess. I was like, I really feel like she's like really far down. Like, I feel like she's in between my hips. Like, and she was like, okay, let me check you. And she was like, yep, you're at nine centimeters. And I was like, oh my gosh. Like my first baby, you guys, my water broke on its own. I basically had to be induced because my body wasn't pushing him out. And I didn't have him for like 19 hours. So it, that's what I was thinking was going to happen. I was like, we're going to hunker down at the hospital. We're going to download shows. We're going to have everything ready. And we get there at noon. And at 4 o'clock, she's like, I mean, you're one more centimeter and we're having this baby. We literally were like, and that's why you see us be like, oh my gosh, oh my, oh. Like we were overtaken by like joy and shock because we were like, how is this so fast? Like it's my second baby, but it's six years later. I mean, I kind of thought... My body would have forgotten, you know, how to go into labor and it didn't know how to do it the first time. 
So I was just like, okay, what is going on? This is so fast. And then we got so excited because you guys know if you have had a long labor, you are waiting forever. And by the end of it, you're just like, I want my baby. I want my baby in my arms. I want to hold my baby, you know? And so to go into labor that quickly, and I mean, if you think about it, I, I was in active labor for 12 hours before I had her, but I didn't go to the hospital for five of those hours. So I, that was a huge blessing to me because I, the whole waiting at the hospital, there's so many things that can make you, you know, apprehensive or nervous. I was glad I was able to labor for five hours at home. Um, so anyway, that being said, when we got ready to go, she called my doctor. My doctor lives really close to the hospital. She came, she was like in the middle of doing laundry and she was like, Lauren, I literally thought you were going to go complete at like 10 at night or something. And I'm like, I know. She was like, when you call me, you're like, I don't know. Am I? I don't know. I'm like, I know. So, um, she was like, this is crazy. And she was like, oh yeah, I see her right there. I mean, you guys can see the video, but she was like, oh yeah, she's right there. Are you ready? And I don't know if you guys can tell this because we had like a flashback montage in our video about how we told everyone we were pregnant, um, which I hope you guys really liked. Comment below if you liked that or if you didn't like that. Um, but I only pushed like four times. I mean, by the time she was there and it was ready to go, I did like a baby practice push and then I was active in my pushing like four times and she came out. Um, and it was the coolest experience because, and, and I'm not saying that this is everyone's experience and I'm not saying that this is definitely not how it was with my first. I mean, it was amazing when he came out like grabbing him and stuff, but it was so cool because it was just so little time leading up to it. And I think that was just by chance um, or by God. Um, but it was just so much joy and adrenaline around it all. And then there she was, you know, and it was, um, for you guys probably don't know this, but I had a really, really, really rough pregnancy. I am 34 years old. My first baby, I was 27. Didn't make it much better. I was super sick with him for the whole entire nine months. I was super sick with her for the whole entire nine months. And then like I was even on medication and it got a little better. But then even in November for Thanksgiving, I cooked all day for everyone. I hosted Thanksgiving that year, which what was I thinking? I was like seven months pregnant. Um, but I went upstairs and vomited. You know, I mean, it just was like everything I would do. I was driving in the car, with my son to school and I would throw up in trash bags. Like it was so brutal. And all my pregnancies, I mean, both my pregnancies were like that. And then if we ever get pregnant again, I'm sure it will be sick like that. I think that's just how I am. Um, so to have an easy birth was such a blessing because it was like, man, that was a rough nine months to go in and just like get to have my baby in five short hours was unbelievable. Um, so anyways, that's kind of really her birth story. What happened after that? So many of you have asked, um, but yes, I was going to tear. And a lot of you said from the video, you're like, did that doctor roll her eyes? She rolled her eyes. Um, she, and we talked about this that day actually, but she was like, I said, did I tear? And she goes, you were about to like pretty bad. You were pushing really hard. And I like looked and I was like, give me the scissors. And she was like, I cut you so that it would be like a solid cut. Um, I know people have mixed emotions about that. If you want to tear naturally versus have an episiotomy, um, in my opinion, it was better because it has been a great recovery. I mean, it was barely a recovery with my first son. I had an episiotomy and I, I was in excruciating pain to go to the bathroom. And when I say that, I mean pee. It, I would burn for days. And I was like, when is this going to get better? I mean, it was so bad. And I just assumed that's how it would be this time. And she said, no, no, no. I stitched you internally, but I also stitched you externally. So if, if any of you guys are wondering about that, apparently it's a technique, like internal and external. So I would ask for that if, if you do tear or if you do need an episiotomy. But she's she made it sound like it was going to be a bad tear. Um, and I, you can tell from the video when she's like, Oh gosh. And then she goes ahead and does it. Um, so yes, I did. It was almost no recovery. I was so scared to pee and I got up and I was like, Oh my gosh, Oh my gosh, I'm not in any pain. So I think that makes a huge difference. Um, the other thing that you guys probably don't know yet is we only stayed in the hospital for one night. We left literally 24 hours later after I had her, we left 24 hours later. 
Um, I don't know why that's always a goal of mine. I just like to be home and around everything. And she had amazing APGARs and she passed every test and she was eating great. Um, another thing I wanted to mention, cause so many people ask like, why didn't you put her on your breast right after you had her? I did not breastfeed. Um, there's some reasons for that that I can get into in another video. And if you guys want to know, you can comment below. Um, but I did not breastfeed. I did not breastfeed with my first son because of a lot of personal things. Um, I had to go to back, back to work in four weeks and I just didn't think it was something mentally I could handle and emotionally I could handle going through divorce, going back to work, all of that. Um, and so with this baby, I just was kind of like, it's just not my norm. And I, I, I never really wanted to do it. Um, that's a whole nother story and I, I don't have a supply. So just FYI, nothing ever came out with either pregnancy at all. Um, so I don't know that it would have been super successful, but both my kids were bottle fed in case you guys are wondering, I'm probably going to get some shame about that, but it's just the way that it goes. You guys, um, anyway, I'm trying to think. So we were just charged 24 hours after we came home. My in-laws were here, but she has been the best sleeper. I mean, four weeks old, she was sleeping through the night. Um, She's just been such an easy baby. In fact, for her birthday party, the theme is the first year has been easy like Sunday morning and we're having like a Sunday brunch um, because it has been. She's been amazing. My husband has been amazing. He is such a hands-on dad um, with both my kids and it is such a blessing to me for sure. I have prayed for that for so long and it is such a blessing. Um, and my son has been the best big brother you could ever imagine or want. Um, it's so sweet to see your kids together. Comment below if you guys have, you know, kids that, you know, you, cause for me, I was like, how could I love another thing? Like I love my son. I mean, and it, it was me and him for so long, you know, by ourselves. And then we got married and we were a family. Um, and it was just so hard to believe that I could like spread that love around, but you can, you definitely, it just doubles, you know? Um, and it just gets bigger every time you have a baby. And when you see your children together, it's just the most amazing thing in the world. Um, but anyways, guys, I'm sorry if that was kind of a long video, but I just wanted to bring you guys up to speed. Comment below what you want to see in the next video. I could definitely do a nursery tour or, um, any kind of product videos. I love those. I watched those a ton when I was pregnant. Um, or a day in the life or whatever you guys want to see, let me know and I will get it up for you guys. I'm hoping to do a video at least once a week. We'll see how that goes. If, if you guys are into that, let me know. If not, let me know as well. Either way, I don't care what you see is what you get. So you guys can comment whatever you think. Um, but anyway, thanks so much for watching guys. I hope to see you in the next video. Bye. Oh yeah. If you like this video, be sure to like, subscribe, comment. You can click that bell um, so that you get notifications every time we have a new video and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.